The rain in Spain is not just on the plain. Daily rainfall could reach 50 to 75 millimetres of rain in places, which is quite a large amount for this part of Spain. And it's not just in the history books. 16,000 volunteers keyed all of that data in the space of 16 days. We estimate 100 million keystrokes. It's Friday the 25th of March and you're listening to Weathersnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Martin Bowles and this is Weathersnap, an insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. Last week, Storm Celia brought torrential rain and damaging winds to Spain, Portugal, the Canaries and northwest Africa. This week, stormy conditions continued, with Spain being particularly badly hit. With more details, here's Helen Roberts. Low pressure in the far western Mediterranean has brought a series of weather fronts to parts of Spain, Portugal, Gibraltar and northern Morocco over recent days, with torrential downpours resulting in flooding and landslides. Dave Oliver of the Met Office Global Guidance Unit has been tracking events. Weather we've seen over Spain and northern Morocco into Gibraltar over recent days has been linked to an area of low pressure that sat to the west of Morocco. Uh, That area of low pressure has been relatively slow moving and will be in a similar area through the next couple of days. And that's bringing quite strong easterly or southeasterly winds to parts of Spain through the Gibraltar Straits and to northern Morocco. And that's giving quite frequent showers, some longer periods of rain, some of it pretty heavy um, to these parts of Spain uh, and the, the far north of Africa. Uh, Over the next couple of days, we'll start to see a reduction in rainfall. Between now and then, uh, some heavy showers are likely. Daily rainfall could reach 50 to 75 millimetres of rain in places, which is quite a large amount for this part of Spain. Uh, And the March average for Valencia, by way of comparison, is only about 45 millimetres. So some unseasonably wet conditions and very windy as well. We've seen some dust storms over parts of Algeria and Morocco recently. Is it unusual for this time of year to see these sorts of conditions? Weather patterns such as these can form. Uh, What is unusual is the amount of rain. We've seen some flooding in uh, parts of Spain, some quite nasty flooding in fact, um, and that's indicative of much higher than usual rainfall amounts for this region of the world at this time of year. Those of us in the UK have experienced a a beautiful week with, with lots of sunshine. A big area of high pressure covers much of the rest of Europe at the moment. Is this related to the weather situation we've seen in parts of Spain and surrounding areas? The more mobile Atlantic type patterns that you might expect uh, across the UK have, have actually been shifted a little bit south on this occasion or blocked from even getting to us. And that's led to a, a effectively a, what we call a, an upper vortex over North Africa and southern Spain over recent days. And that's been driving the weather pattern and the surface low pressure system that's causing the unsettled weather across Iberia and North Africa. Dave Oliver from Global Guidance, thanks very much for joining us. Helen Roberts. In other global weather news, both the Arctic and Antarctic made headlines this week, with extraordinary heat waves reported at both poles. The Arctic is currently emerging from winter, but the northward movement of warm air and moisture has allowed temperatures to rise 30 degrees higher than normal. At the same time, Antarctica should be rapidly cooling now as the southern summer ends. However, it's been affected by an atmospheric river also bringing unseasonal heat and moisture. One South Pole research station has recorded a temperature 40 degrees above normal. Both these events are causing grave concern with regard to the potential impact on sensitive ecosystems. Measuring weather conditions in uninhabited parts of the globe has become far easier with the advent of satellite technology. However, in the centuries prior to this, scientists and amateur enthusiasts were forced to painstakingly record their observations by hand. Those records present a valuable insight into past climate and offer clues as to how our climate may change in the future. But how can thousands of written observations be converted into modern data? Met Office senior archivist Dr Catherine Ross has been involved in a project which aims to do just that. 
within the National Meteorological Archive, we've got a vast amount of data. And one of the series that we've got is called the 10 year rainfall books. Now, that's actually 66,000 sheets of monthly rainfall data from across the UK and Irish Isles. And that was identified as really useful stuff for us to digitise and get into our databases. 66,000 entries or books. Yeah, it's 66,000 pages, but actually 5.28 million numbers, all of which were keyed four times. I hope it wasn't just you who was doing <laughs> and engaging in this project. <laughs> no, Claire, I think that would have taken me the rest of my life. Um, what actually happened was that we scanned all of this material and put it on our digital library and archive to make it available. Ed Hawkins and the team from Reading University found that information, um, worked with us and with Mark McCarthy from the Met Office National Climate Information Centre. And together we designed a rainfall rescue project where all of those sheets were put onto a Zooniverse site. Now, this all happened in March 2020 might sound familiar as a time when a lot of people had a lot of extra time on their hands. And you know, we launched this to the world and 16,000 volunteers keyed all of that data in the space of 16 days, would you believe? We estimate 100 million keystrokes. That's incredible. That's almost like a human supercomputer, isn't it? Nobody could believe it happened so fast. Um, but you know, everybody was really engaged with it. You know, and it gave us so much data so quickly. There must be some fantastic stories coming out of the data that you, you've you gleaned. There's all sorts of things. Um, I mean, for a start, it now takes our data record way back. I mean, the earliest data that we've now got will actually take you into 1677, but that's very sporadic. But it gives us a really, really strong data record for the entire Victorian period now and earlier. And we've got stories to do with the new railways. Uh, we've got stories from particular individuals. So Lady Baining of Honingham in Norfolk used to take her rain gauge between her country seat and her London estate. Um, and then we've got another rain gauge from Tower Bank, which any fan of Beatrix Potter might recognise from being just down the road from her house near Sori. And actually it features in the tale of Jemima Puddle Duck. And this data on so many levels just helps us understand our environment better, does it? The new data that we've got in now accounts for 84% of the monthly rainfall data in our HAD UK grids. It's massively increased the amount of data available to us. And what that's helping is, as you say, it's helping us to see in more detail the trends in our rainfall patterns. So we can see that generally it's getting wetter. But we can also see some of the natural variation in addition to the human made variation that's going on at the same time. We can see both of those coming out from the data. Claire Nazir talking to Dr. Catherine Ross. The UK has had a lot of dry weather in recent days, but will this trend continue into the weekend? Here with the details, Alex Deakin. It may be the shortest weekend of the year because the clocks go forward, but it's going to be one of the sunniest with some parts of the UK enjoying unbroken sunshine on both Saturday and Sunday. High pressure has been steadily building through the week and it is sticking around for the weekend. So it means largely clear skies. There will be one or two exceptions, misty conditions in places in the morning, one or two fog patches on Saturday morning. And a weak weather front will at times affect the Northern Isles. So a little bit of patchy rain is possible, certainly across Shetland during Saturday. But apart from that, and apart from a very isolated shower in the afternoon, it is basically a sunny story this weekend. It will be a little breezy along the south coast, although not as windy as last weekend. Temperatures will respond to that sunshine as well. So the mornings will start chilly, down to two or three, even in urban areas on both Saturday and Sunday morning. But by the afternoon, we're widely up into the mid-teens, 15, 16, 17, 18 in one or two places. We might even squeak still up to 19 or 20 in a couple of isolated spots on both Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Compared to the average for this time of year, which is nine across the north, 10 or 11 across the south. So we're well above average, pretty warm afternoons, chilly mornings, plenty of sunshine on offer this weekend. Alex Deakin. So now we know about the next few days, but how did we fare overall last week? Here are the extremes. 
The highest UK temperature was 20.2 degrees Celsius at Kinloch Hue in Ross and Cromarty on Saturday, just as the current dry spell began. Although temperatures were generally above average for the time of year, this part of the highlands had a profound fern effect that day, which raised the temperatures higher than elsewhere. Clear skies meant that many places had overnight air frosts last week. The lowest figure was minus 5.8 Celsius at Aboyne in Aberdeenshire. There was some rain earlier in the week, and RAF Cranwell in Lincolnshire had the largest daily total. 25.8 millimetres was measured on Wednesday. Clear skies at the end of the week and the coming of the spring equinox meant increasing sunshine hours for all. The largest total was 11.6 hours at Shoebury Ness in Essex on Saturday. Well, that's just about it for this week's weather snap. But before we go, a quick reminder that the latest edition of our sister series, Mostly Climate, is out now. In this episode, we hear about the extraordinary weather events that overtook British Columbia in 2021. The intertidal zone on the BC coast was exposed to this heat as well. And they're measuring the bivalves and all those goopy animals. Several billion died through this heat. And that's the natural side of things. The fish farming, so oysters, uh, those type of animals are also hugely affected throughout this event. Meteorologist Armel Castellan talking in the latest edition of Mostly Climate. You can hear the full details of those incredible weather events by visiting our SoundCloud or YouTube weather channels. For now, though, that's it for Weather Snap. I'm Martin Bowles. The producer was Claire Nazir and the editor was Adrian Holloway. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.